Hi, I'm Graham Robinson, Group Practice Manager at Data3, here with Andrew White, the Technology Lead for Data Center and Cloud. So today we're talking about Intersight. So firstly, Andrew, what is Intersight? Oh, thanks, mate. Uh, Intersight is a, a, a software as a service platform which Cisco has developed for customers to manage all the UCS and Hyperflex fleet. So how does Intersight compare with the way that customers used to manage their data center? Well, that's a really good question. So customers in the past have had to manage their, uh, their server fleet, whether it be a hyperconverged or even a uh, you know, blade or rack fleet, um, basically on a box by box basis. Uh, 10 years ago, uh, Cisco introduced UCS, which centralized management under the, what we call the fabric interconnects of the day. Um, it's sort of an evolution of that. Um, we've evolved from being on-prem though to being a, a fully uh, managed SaaS platform. So as a SaaS platform, I'm, I'm expecting that Cisco Cisco has visibility around the world of many data center deployments and can actually aggregate a lot of information from those data center deployments. How does Cisco use that for customers? That's a good question, um, once again. And so there's roughly 500,000 uh, elements being managed by Intersight today. So it's been around for a couple of years uh, already. Um, but of those sort of 500,000, the, the level of telemetry we're gathering is things like um, uh, alert logs, uh, status of you know, hardware, um, and what uh, operating systems people are running as well, so we can understand how compatible they are, but more importantly, we can help them fix problems quicker. One of the conversations that we typically have with customers when, we, when, they, when we start to peel back the challenges they have with data center is that for many years they've been focused on their cloud journey and where the workloads are going to be, only to find that not every workload will actually land in a public cloud environment and they need to focus back on their own data center. At the same time, they're struggling with resourcing, they're struggling with hours in the day, and they're struggling with keeping up from a skills perspective. How does Intersight really help them address uh, either the skills that they require or just the sheer workload that the teams are under to manage their data center? Yeah, well, you're absolutely right around some of those workloads staying uh, on-prem. You know, there's uh, a lot of reasons, whether they be for maybe security or maybe some data gravity reasons, people are keeping uh, workloads on-prem. And for those that are on-prem, you know, you're right, that management piece is absolutely critical because um, they're used to having you know, extreme uh, velocity for managing their cloud apps. You know, we can spin up uh, platforms uh, incredibly quick um, and we can innovate really quickly using those, those cloud resources. Um, what that means though is trying to do that on-prem is all of a sudden we've got to manage you know, operating systems, physical infrastructure, um, and then all the you know, in the past what's been really challenging is managing the compatibilities and then if there's a fault, who do I call? So, you know, we could be have hypervisor vendors involved, we could have storage vendors involved, network vendors involved, um, and it can be pretty cumbersome. Um, with Intersight, we sort of negate a lot of that by gathering all that telemetry, including logs from hypervisors and those sorts of things as well, um, and sort of have one throat to choke, if you will, around uh, fixing any faults and, and managing things. What do I need to deploy on-prem to actually get Intersight working? Well, the good thing is if you're a uh, Cisco UCS customer, um, you don't have to do anything because it's basically free of charge. Um, so all you basically need to do is uh, click a couple of buttons and register your device and, and you've instantly got access. Um, there's some amazing things you can get instantly by doing that. Um, one of those main things is obviously being able to send that telemetry back to the Cisco TAC automatically. So in the uh, event you have a, a, a problem, the tax already got your logs, right? And so basically the, the, the time to resolve an issue is incredibly quick. So what are the top three things you see customers use Intersight for? Yeah, um, obviously there's a lot more than three, but we'll, you know, it's hard to, uh, to narrow that down to only three top things. Um, probably the number one is just really understanding their fleet, right? Um, getting a consolidated view, no matter what sort of platform it is, whether it be Blade Rack or, or Hyperconverged in one location, gathering the, the inventory is, uh, is really amazing, even just firmware versions and those sorts of things. Um, while that might seem really simplistic, and, and it is, um, it's incredibly valuable, particularly when um, a customer through that inventory can understand what their supported contract status is. Literally with one click they can see whether they've you know, backed out their support to, to Data3 or not, um, which is obviously critical. Um, and you know, from there, understand if they're vulnerable to maybe some security vulnerabilities, whether their, their hardware is, and software is compatible with the right drivers, hypervisors, those sorts of things. On the security vulnerabilities, how important is that now? Well, um, it's not just now, it's probably been forever. 
but it's been incredibly difficult to actually manage um, you know, uh, software and firmware vulnerabilities on a hardware fleet. Um, uh, a couple of years back, or not, maybe not even a couple of years, we had the infamous Spectre and Meltdown challenges that the industry faced. Um, and that was uh, basically a first. And those vulnerabilities allowed guests inside hypervisor, so a VM, um, to actually understand and see what's going on in the, another virtual machine. And so or it broke down a barrier between virtual machines. And so that is obviously incredibly bad, particularly if you're a, you know, a service provider or even if you're just doing security controls between zones. Um, in the past, people just didn't bother you know, managing the firmware because it was so difficult. Um, when that came out, it forced everybody to go on and upgrade BIOSes, firmware versions on, co on uh, management controllers and these sorts of things. So it was an incredible amount of work to go and do that. What, what Intersight allows is as crazy as it sounds, is one click to understand, A, if you're vulnerable, right? Um, to, to do that previously, we have to, you know, maybe write some script or code to, to download, you know, the firmware versions from every server that we, we have, um, then cross-reference that with some data sheets, you know, literally line by line, am I vulnerable, yes or no, uh, and then collate and create some report and give it to my, my CISO and, and pray. So we keep talking about Intersight as the management platform for data centers. How does it actually work from a branch office, remote edge, uh, com you know, remote computing perspective? Yeah, well, the beauty of Intersight being that SaaS platform, uh, we sort of break away from the traditional mold of having you know, management infrastructure, either living in our data centers or, or, or scattered around the, the environment. Um, because it is that SaaS platform, the, your remote uh, edge devices, and, you know, they could be out in a, a mine site, they could be in a bank branch, they could be in a school, um, simply just connect either through a proxy server or through a, you know, a secure uh, um, appliance and connect straight into the cloud platform and you instantly can manage them as if they're inside your data center. But we, you keep talking about the fact that uh, Intersight's a SaaS platform. What about for those customers that run a, a, protected, a protected or a secure environment, uh, how do we help them then? Yeah, well, so the, the beauty of, of Intersight and being able to design it from the, the sort of ground up um, allowed us to, A, push it through, you know, your traditional HTTPS um, out um, via traditional firewalls. Um, we support a proxy server, which actually a lot of people don't um, uh, know that we do that, but that's, which is good and that's, it's actually incredibly helpful because most organisations still have those. Um, but for those organisations that you still can't go through a proxy, we've got a, what we call a tethered appliance. And so it's basically a VM that you install on-prem, but it needs to connect to uh, the cloud. But it basically is operating as a mini instance of Intersight. And so when we add new features to Intersight, which is happening as crazy as it sounds every week, um, those features automatically get dropped down onto your appliance. We've got a cloud-based, AI-driven SaaS platform that connects to data center, branch office, um, and edge compute that reduces the operational support cost, gives you visibility, analytics, and automates a lot of your activities. How do you buy it? Well, the good thing is if you're an existing customer, you actually get it free of charge. Um, and it's incredibly simple to enable it. Um, whether you're a B-series customer, you set it up once inside your UCS manager, you literally just click a button, you get a little key and you, you basically claim the device here. Uh, and likewise, if you're a Rack or a, uh, a Hyperflex customer as well. So it's as simple as hitting a website and logging in. Um, where, where do I start? Yep, so intersight.com is the, uh, the place to go. Um, if you have a Cisco account already, you can already log in. Um, and from there, you can start claiming your devices. Thanks, Andrew. That's been really insightful and really appreciated. If you'd like any more information, just go to data3.com or contact your account manager.